Welcome back. The barriers between science and spirituality are ungrounded but crippling. The words of philosopher Charles Taylor, who this week accepted the $1.5 million Templeton Prize for progress towards research or discoveries about spiritual realism. But how far can philosophy help in solving some of the world's greatest problems like religious violence and terrorism? Charles Taylor is with me. Welcome, Charles. And I'm also delighted to welcome Muhammad Abdul Bari, the head of the M M Muslim Council of Great Britain. Welcome, welcome. And by Indarjit Singh, the editor of the Sikh Messenger in the UK. Welcome, too. Thank you. Um, Charles, beginning with you, congratulations. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, the, uh, you said your remark on one occasion recently was spirituality can help to fight bigotry and violence. And yet other people would say that religion has been the cause for much of the mm. violence in the world. Uh, is religion the cause or the cure? Both. I mean, religion is the cause of lots of violence, but of course so are, is uh, various kinds of militant atheisms we saw under Stalin and so on. So what we have to ask is the question, what turns religion or these other ideologies in a violent direction, and what can turn them against a violent direction? And really, when you look at it more closely, you find that what can turn religion away from violence is another understanding of religion, that uh, you, know, you may have very chauvinistic people, crusaders and so on, but it is the, the leaders that actually turn people away from that are the people like Gandhi or Martin Luther King who understand their spirituality in terms of peace and, and nonviolence, And that's really the only way to answer it and put an end to it. And one of the things, Mohammed, that you, you <coughs> said was, that's got to be dealt with here as an example is the tensions between Muslims and the rest of Britain. Um, are those religious tensions or economic tensions or what? I think, uh, <coughs> sorry, it's, it's a complex problem. And uh, politics of religion is the main culprit, in my opinion. Uh, <clears throat> religion itself, uh, all transcendental religions uh, talk of uh, tolerance, respect, understanding. But when some people uh, of bigotry uh, take religion as part of politics, then that creates problem. I think in this country, uh, after 7-7, what we have seen is a, a division between the communities. And there are certain uh, <coughs> sections of the media and probably sections of the media uh, uh, po politicians who try to uh, probably um, because of their knee jerk reaction are not helping. Right. And as you look at this situation, where do you feel the. Yeah, I, I do feel that we perhaps wrongly blame religion. I would say religion is not a cause of conflict. If we look at the core teachings of religion, like Jesus Christ's. Sermon on the Mount, there is nothing that um, uh, pushes us towards violence or conflict there. What religion is very often used at is, as is an offensive weapon because religion has with, carries with it passions and belief and they can be manipulated and are manipulated by unscrupulous people to be used as an offensive weapon. We don't need religion um, to fight with one another. Cavemen did it uh, much earlier, other people, civilized or we call them civilizations, but uh, people like Hitler and Stalin, they were not particularly religious and there was plenty of horrific conflict. Religion, I believe, the core values and teachings of the religion, which are very common in our different faiths, are a cure, not a cause of conflict. They are pretty common, aren't they? Yes. But, but do you think uh, religion is getting off a bit lightly there in what Indaj is saying? Well, in the sense that, yes, religion can be used and is used in the 20th and 21st century as a way of mobilizing people politically. And it can also be used as a way of mobilizing people in a context of, of conflict and fighting, right? It's very interesting that in the present case in the uh, Arab world, for instance, it's an Islamic form of mobilization against the West. But earlier, the same people were being mobilized against the same West by Arab nationalism, which was non religious. So it's something in a way adventitious to religion that it's being used for this. But when it is captured for this, uh, as you said, it has tremendous power and therefore it can do, in these hands, it can do tremendous destructive work. 
much more destruction because it, of the emotion that it can whip up. Or? And because of the very profound identification people have with it. I mean, in a sense, their identity with their religion can be very strong. So if you really convince them that they, what their religion demands of them is this kind of battle to the death against someone else, then you, can, you have a very powerful weapon. It is an unscrupulous use of it, but it can be immensely destructive. And you, you said on one occasion recently um, in, in the newspapers, Mohammed, you said that uh, unless something's done for the condition of the poorer Muslims and so on, and those who feel uh, in various ways ill-treated and so on, Britain would have to face up to the threat of up to two million Muslim terrorists. <coughs> I'm sorry, that, that was a misquote from me, what I said. Well, I funded it. <laughs> I, 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 thought, I said to someone just now, I bet he didn't say that. But anyway, yes. That was a misquote from me. What I said, that uh, um, <coughs> if Muslims are treated as if uh, all of them are terrorists, that, 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 that there are then two million terrorists. So that, uh, that was the sort of language that I used. Um, in fact, uh, you took a risk with the press there. You took a risk. Well, uh, we, 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 we protested and they published, published my letter, but uh, at the end of the day... It made less of a yeah, yeah, that's, that, that, that's the problem, because uh, uh, there couldn't be two million, two, two million terrorists <laughs> in this country. There are only a few, handful, handful, and we have to deal, deal with them in a, in a surgical, surgical manner so that the community's trust is there uh, and, and the community is not undermined. At the same time, all those bad apples can be easily uh, separated from the community. And that's, that's the most important, uh, important job, and it has to be a holistic process. Because if a community feels vulnerable, not trusted, and they don't feel the ownership of the, of the society, then there are issues, then there are problems. And it's not only the Muslim issue, it could be an overall social issue. And in terms, Indarjit, uh, of uh, people you were, were talking about, the things that you have in common just now, and I mean, Sikhism believes very much there is the same God Absolutely. for all yes. of us, yes? yes, the same God, and, yes. and that all people, all races are equal one. in terms of their rights. Yes. E equal members of one human race. We don't believe in different races. Guru Nanak did t say that Manas ki jat, or the Guru said, Manas ki jat sab ek recognize the oneness of the human race. He also said that no one religion has a monopoly of truth. We should respect all religions. Now, that is fundamental to today's society, that belief, that teaching. That is the way out of conflict that we must respect other religions. And one of the other problems you've said is the problem of a, a lack of dialogue between, between uh, the religions on the one hand and science on the other, that that, that rupture is also serious. Yeah, well, I'm thinking particularly of social science, that our way of understanding these things has been, I think, twisted by the fact that social science has been very ignorant of and uninterested in the religious dimension. So they don't really understand how religion gets involved in violence, what can get it involved, what can, can uh, as it were, bring, uh, separate the two. And you just get attitudes that say, this religion is violent, or something of that kind, which are, you know, like the present Islamophobia in the West. It's based on very deep ignorance about Islam, but it's the kind of thing that uh, even people in the university can spread and then can spread in the society. And that is where the dynamic gets set up, see, because the reaction, as it were, of defense for a religion comes from a sense of being attacked, and then each side, you know, as it were, raises the, the aggro in the other side. And I very much fear that. I see in Western society a kind of mindless Islamophobia, mm -hmm. which we can only defeat by getting people to understand more about Islam, to meet, uh, different kind of Muslims to have contacts across the barriers. So what would you say, Mohammed, is what's the practical thing? What's the first practical thing to deal with these problems of violence, violence between religions, violence between not religions and so on, to, to find this world of peace and goodwill that we were hearing about? Um, what's, what's the practical thing that could, <coughs> could really most, make progress? The most think? important thing is to talk to each other as neighbors, as colleagues, as friends in the street, talk to each other, try to know each other, because uh, human beings are very diverse, communities are very complex. It's not just one size fits all. So within the Muslim community, there's tremendous diversity and variations, same with the other communities. So it's not just black and white that a certain uh, one or two person, person in a community did something and the whole community is blamed for that. It's not like that. So understanding 
comes through interaction, engagement, talking together, working together, and have basic respect as human beings. Because when we talk about the spirit of any religion, rather than mechanical rituals, all religions teach, as Indrajit said, similar things, same things. Respect human beings, because at the end of the day, uh, what we have learned, that we are the best creation of God, and uh, human beings have choice. So our choice is to live together in peace and harmony, or probably go for de destroying each other. What's the one practical thing you would say that could start this movement going? Well, I sometimes wonder about whether we are the best thing that God has created when we see the awful things we do to each other. But on a practical level, I think we must tackle ignorance, ignorance about our different nationalities, cultures, beliefs, because it is on ignorance that you uh, prejudice flourishes, and that prejudice turns to bigotry and violence, given the right sort of or the wrong sort of circumstances. Um, that is its ignorance. Now, in in we were talking as we're coming here in Canada, some progress is being made in that direction. In this country, although we freely criticise the uh, level of progress, I think com considerable progress has been made. But if we turn to other parts of the world, they are light years behind. They actually believe that you shouldn't teach anything about religion in schools. You shouldn't teach other, anything about other uh, cultures in schools. So children grow up to keep the bigotry that their parents gave them. Right. And uh, in conclusion, the prize winner himself, what, what, your colleagues are making those points, what would you say is the well, most practical Well, I agree with those points, but I would add another practical point. I think that we've got a kind of adversarial relation going with the Muslim world now because of the war in Iraq, because of, I think, non-resolution of the Israeli-Palestinian issue. I think there are things that we have to address in the West precisely to get around this idea that we are in some kind of clash of civilizations. We aren't, but if people keep spreading this word, if people keep convincing other people that we are, we could drift towards it. And I think that's a very important lesson that we should take. Thank you all very much indeed. Yes, like the point Mohammed was making about if you call people terrorists, you may, yeah, you right. may make them into terrorists. Thank you all very much Thank indeed. You. We'll be right back in just a moment. Join us then.